Good morning and welcome to day two of the BioC 2021 conference. We are um, going to have a wonderful package demo in just a minute, but I just want to re reiterate some of the things that we start every session with. Um, if you'd like to ask the question, ask questions of the speaker, please use the Q&A tab over to your right. Um, you can use the chat to just chat with other attendees. Um, if you'd like to ask a question on stage, you can use the raise hand feature and we will bring you on stage. We will be taking all questions at the end after the, the demonstration, So, but feel free to enter your questions at any time. At this point, I would like to introduce Eleni Adam from Old Dominion University, and she will be speaking about Hummingbird. Hello, I am Eleni Adam. I'm a PhD student at the Department of Computer Science of Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia. And today I will present to you our package Hummingbird is a package for detecting differential methylation. The hummingbird is used for identifying differentially methylated regions, or DMRs, between case and control groups using whole genome bisulfide sequencing or reduced representative bisulfide sequencing experiment data. The package uses a Bayesian hidden Markov model for detecting DMRs. It feeds a Bayesian hidden Markov model for one chromosome at a time. The final output of Hummingbird are the detected DMRs with start and end positions in a given chromosome, directions of the DMRs, whether hyper or hypo, and the numbers of CPGs in these DMRs. The package, in order to enable the analysis, contains three functions. The first function is the Hummingbird EM, which reads the input data, sets initial values, executes the expectation maximization algorithm for the Bayesian hidden Markov model, and infers the best sequence of methylation states. Then, the Hummingbird post-adjustment function is executed after the Hummingbird EM, it allows the researchers to place three additional requirements on DMRs, the minimum, the minimum length of a DMR, the minimum number of CPGs in a DMR, and the maximum distance between any two adjusted CPGs in a DMR in base pairs. Finally, the researchers are able to observe their results with the Hummingbird graph function which generates observation and prediction graphs for a user-specified region. Let's take a closer look at how the, exactly the Hummingbird package will be used. We will run the Hummingbird package in the RStudio environment, and we will use as input the data from the Large Offspring Syndrome study, specifically chromosome 9. To proceed with Hummingbird, we need to first load the necessary libraries. We need to load the genomic ranges. And we need to load the summarized experiment. And finally, humming. Our input data, as it can be seen here, are located in the full matrices abnorm m, abnorm um, norm m, norm um, and the vector pause. The matrix abnorm um contains the number of unmethylated reads for the abnormal group. The abnorm m matrix contains the numbers of methylated reads for the abnormal group. Then the norm M matrix contains the number of methylated reads for the normal group. And finally, the norm UM matrix contains the number of unmethylated reads for the normal group. For each of these four matrices, each row is a CPG position and each column is a biological replicate, for example, a patient. 
In the large offspring study, the abnormal group has four cattle and the normal group has four cattle as well. Thus, these four matrices each contain four columns. The following shows the first six rows for, from the norm M matrix. Then the new new M, abnormal M, and the abnormal new M matrix. We require these four matrices to only contain commonly shared CPGs at the same genomic positions. CPGs that are not shared by all biological replicants are removed before analysis. Our Bayesian hidden Markov model does not have a requirement of minimum number of biological replicants in each treatment group. The case group or abnormal group and the control group or normal group can have either one or more replicants. The two groups can have an equal number of replicants. Next, we use the vector pause to contain the genomic positions of these CPGs in these four matrices. Now, to use the hummingbird package, we need to put the four matrices and the vector pause in two summarized experiment objects, one for the case group and one for the control group. So let's do that. First summarized experiment object. Second summarized experiment object. Making out that it is chromosome nine. Okay, I'm working on it. And now the example I see control and the example I see case summarize experiment objects are ready to be used by the hummingbird package. You can take a look inside the uh, objects and you can see, for example, the CPG positions. Now, 
we can also see the matrices let's see portion of my data Now we can uh, run the Hummingbird package since we have our input data in the format that is needed. And we will start with the expectation maximization algorithm, which is the Hummingbird EM function of the Hummingbird package. So let's see how that looks like. So uh, the hummingbird EM function takes three parameters as input, the control group data, the case group data, and the bean size. The experiment info control and the experiment info case um, contain respectively the input data for the control and the case groups. The input data includes number of methylated reads and number of unmethylated reads for each CPG position for an entire chromosome. Now, the third parameter, the bean size, is the user desired bean size. Our default bean size is 40 base pairs. A smaller bean size leads to more accurate DMR boundary prediction a larger bean size leads to faster computational size. The default bean size is chosen by balancing these two factors. So let's run it. We see the iteration number where the algorithm is located at the moment. Usually it takes a minute or a couple minutes at most to run the whole chromosome. This is chromosome 9 from the large offspring syndrome study. We are saving our output in the EM info which is a genomic radius object. And in some seconds, we will see exactly its output. Iteration number five. and it has finished this calculation. So within 90 minutes, it was able to generate the whole chromosome result using the default parameter settings. Now let's take a look at the output. A, ge a genomic ranges object uh, that contains the start and end positions of each bean the distance between the current bean and the bean ahead of it, the average methylation rate of normal and abnormal groups, 
and the predicted direction of the methylation change, where zero means a predicted normal beam, one means a predicted hypermethylated beam, and minus one means a predicted hypomethylated beam. Next, we will use the Hummingbird post-adjustment function, which will adjust the EM info uh, object in a way that each detected DMR has a user-defined minimum length, a minimum number of CPGs, and maximum gap between the adjusted CPGs in each DMR. However, if the user does not define these, the default values will be 500 for the minimum length, um, 10 for the minimum number of CPGs, and 300 will be the maximum gap between uh, adjusted CPGs in the DMR. Let's run the function with the default values. Minimum CPG is 10, which is the default, but it can always change according to what the user wants to do. Minimum length, 500, again like the default, and the max, maximum gap, 300. Okay, so the post-adjustment um, info, the output, in other words, is a list of two genomic ranges objects. The DMRs and the Bob's post adjustment um, object. Now, specifically, the DMRs contain the detected regions based on the user defined arguments the minimum length, minimum number of CPGs, and the max gap. It, contain, it contains the refined DMRs with the start genomic position, the end genomic position, the length of the region, the direction of the predicted methylation change where zero indicates no significant change, one indicates predicted hypermethylation, and minus one indicates predicted hypomethylation, and finally the number of CPGs. Now the OPS post-adjustment object contains methylation status of each CPG site. Finally, we use the last function of Hummingbird package, the Hummingbird graph, to visualize observations and predictions for a user-defined genomic region. The Hummingbird graph function Visualize uh, calculations. Okay. 
you can pick any of the DMRs that are seen above, or we can actually select the one which has the maximum number of CPGs. So maybe let's do that. Let's find out which one of the DMRs has the maximum number of CPGs. Okay, so this is the one which has the maximum number of CBGs, which in this case is 179. So let's use the hummingbird graph function to visualize the specific DMR. Coordinate one being from here and coordinate two. Here on the right hand side, we can see the plots. Now, in the observations plot, the horizontal axis shows genomic positions, the vertical axis displays the sample average methylation rates for normal and abnormal groups for HB. And in the predictions graph plot, displays the sample average difference between the abnormal group and the normal group for each bean. The numbers 0, 1, and minus 1 indicate the predictions as we said before. As a user, you may like to see a larger area. So let's take a look from until here. Again here, uh, we see the methylation difference plot which visualizes the sample average difference along with predictions. Zero indicates no significant change, one indicates predicted hypermethylation, and minus one indicates predicted hypermethylation, as we can see here. And the sample average plot, a scatter plot with sample averages from the two comparison groups. So with the Hummingbird package, we were able to do our analysis within seconds and we can view in detail the regions we are specifically interested in. The Hummingbird package is available for download in the Bioconductor webpage.
and currently it's in version 1.2. It is a package written in C language while its interface is in R, enabling it to be fast like a hummingbird. Please let me know if you have any questions and feel free to email. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm sure she would appreciate the applause, but Alina actually got kicked off this session. Um, we're trying to get her back on. So if everybody wants to hang on for just a minute or so, if that's not possible, we will set her up at a table in the lounge and um, we'll be able to either directly messenger through the platform or we'll set up a table for her and you can just drop by and ask her questions about her presentation. But if you can just hold on for a minute or two, we'll see if we can get her back on. Okay, everybody, it looks like she's not able to rejoin. So um, she will be available on the platform later, hopefully, if she can get her Wi-Fi up and running so you can send her a message through the chat. Um, Mikhail kindly put the link to the vignette uh, in the chat so you could play around with that if you have a few minutes before your next session. Um, so we will end this early and um, feel free to reach out to me or Elena um, if you want to set up a time to meet with her. Thank you, everyone.